So I just wanted to share with you something I've come across quite recently, um, but is a really good game changer, I think, in terms of like time management and prioritization and just making sure you're being really effective as a manager. Because often as managers, we get sucked into a lot of firefighting, a lot of day-to-day -day stuff, um, and there's a lot of kind of just busy noise that happens within our days and working weeks. But this 30 day plan um, technique I've come across has really helped me to be more strategic and make sure that I'm really making the most of the opportunities and the big game changer meetings or things that I really need to land well to be effective as a manager um, by making sure I've got time to prep for those properly, I've got the right information when I get to those meetings and that also I've had a chance to prepare. I think sometimes, particularly in this kind of hybrid way of working when you're on back-to-back -back Teams calls, you can be jumping between lots of different types of meetings in a day and I, for instance, could be doing it in internal team meeting and then jumping onto a client meeting to talk about a really technical issue and then I might be jumping onto another meeting where I'm trying to win some new business and if you haven't got kind of a prep um, framework in place it can feel very like um, jumping around basically and that you don't have time to gather your thoughts for each of those different types of meetings to make sure you're being as good as you can. So in this video I'm just going to talk about my 30 day plan technique um, so let's get into it. So what I do each week is make some time to think about what is happening in four weeks time. So that's where your 30 days come in. So I work backwards in four weeks. Um, so what are the big meetings I've got in? What are the big projects that I want to have delivered? What are the things that I need to have consistently moved forward to make sure that I'm meeting our overall strategic goals and objectives? Because we can get really busy with the day to day and then you think, oh, I haven't had time to work on that actual big project, which is a real game changer because I've been too busy kind of drawn into operational stuff that I shouldn't be. So what I do is look at like what's coming up. So I look at four weeks out, three weeks out, two weeks out and one week out. And I say, what are the big game changes that I need to have done? So sometimes they will be really important, like tentpole meetings. So real important meetings where I need to get a strategic decision or I need to win some new business or something that's kind of a real big element of my role. So once I've identified what those big meetings are, I start to think about what information or what things do I need to have done to make sure that meeting is a success. So sometimes it might be I need to gather some information. So I need to make a list of the things that I need to know before I go into that meeting. It might be that I need to have some conversations with either team members or other people in the business or clients to line up our ducks in a row and make sure that we're going in with a considered view. Or it may well be that there's some things that I need to do to lobby to get a certain um, outcome that I want. So I need to be having some pre-conversations with people to have some of that debate rather than just walking into a meeting cold and expecting everyone to be up to speed on a particular issue and all kind of come with the same perception. So what that allows me to do is make sure that when those meetings do happen is I've done the appropriate prep, I'm ready and that also I've had um, as many sort of conversations or actions to make sure that I'm set up for success and I'm probably going to get the outcome from that meeting that I want. What I also do with that 30 day plan process is think about what things are kind of either not going to be achieved in that time and then think about what can I do to make that happen. So sometimes if I've got a big project on and it needs to be delivered I might try and move out a deadline. So what I will do is think ahead of time okay that's probably not going to be delivered by then or it's probably not going to be as good as it needs to be so then start to think about can I move the deadline out because it's much easier to move a deadline out further away than it is when you're right on top of it so what I mean is if you say to someone that was do something was due in four weeks but actually it's going to be five that's not a problem but if you say to someone the day before something's due to be delivered oh I need more time that's going to create more issues so thinking ahead of time what can I perhaps push back or what isn't going to be achieved and then having those conversations early because actually if they say no the deadline's completely fixed then at least you know that and then you can start to think are there things that I can move out of my diary or tasks I can delegate or things that aren't as important to give me the best run at actually being able to deliver what that is. So um, I had that recently at work, I had like a big investigation that came in and I needed to do it. So what I had to do was go through my diary and think about what are the things that I could kind of move out or move um, onto other people to allow me to have the best run at delivering that work. And I managed to get the, like, the work done on a very tight deadline, but only because I'd managed the, kind of the rest of my workload over the next three weeks to allow that. So once I've kind of gone through my diary and I've kind of put those temp poles, I will keep a running list of all the other things I need to do. So it might be to have those conversations, it might be to get information, and then I look at my current diary and say, have I already got a meeting with that person? I can tack it onto the end or do I need to send an email or do I need to block some time out for us to 
to do those things. So I keep a running list basically of all the tasks that are gonna make that 30 day plan work properly um, and then work out how's best for me to communicate that um, and make sure that those things kind of get, get plugged into the diary or get done. The other thing you can do once you've been clear about like the 30 day plan is that when other people try to put perhaps stuff that's less relevant into your diary or ask for meetings, you can be clear with them. I'm like, I'm really sorry, I can't deal with that now, but I could do a meeting in two weeks. And it just allows you to proactively manage like the boundaries on your diary. Because one thing I notice like with this way of working is, you know, lots of emails come in and people want calls and it's all needs to be done today. And actually when you sometimes speak to them, it's not a today issue, it could be a next week or next month issue, but it's just we've got used to kind of finding us 15 minutes or half an hour in someone's diary and just popping a call in. So just being clear about what your actual strategic goals are for 30 days can allow you to more effectively like, manage your time um, and manage your boundaries when people ask for additional tasks on top or additional information that you're not kind of prepared for. And then the final element, which is a bit like time blocking, is around blocking out time to deal with those priorities. So there might be you want an hour or two every day to work on your big strategic projects, or you might want to set aside a day a week to be able to do that. So by blocking out your time in your diary, you've just meant that you're able to dedicate the time you need to, um, so that when those meetings roll around or when those projects need to be delivered, you're ready and centered to do that. And that's really important as a manager or a leader, because if you've got a reputation of consistently delivering to a high standard, because you're able to manage the competing priorities. That's gonna set you up really well, both in terms of your reputation, it may well be if you've got performance element to your contract, you're always gonna be able to meet that, but also it just shows that you're competent and able to deal with the strategic priorities as well as managing your day-to-day -day really well. And ultimately that's a tra very transferable skill that's gonna take you up to higher levels of your career if that's what you want. If Perhaps that's not what you want, but what that this process also does allow you to be is not to get too stressed or overwhelmed by a deluge of like unimportant tasks and allows you really to focus on what you think are going to be the most added value activities for, for ourselves. Because as a manager, you don't want to just feel like you're reacting to other people's priorities. You want to feel like you're able to advance what your own priorities are as well. So I'd love to hear what you think about all the techniques that you use to make sure that you're planning really effectively that kind of short to medium term or perhaps if you'd like a video where I'll show you actually my 30 day plan in the process, then please leave a comment below. I'm Liz and here on my channel, we talk about all things around management, leadership and making sure that we've got confidence at work to do our jobs well. Um, so we'll see you in the next video.